What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of JD Cars. If you're new here, my name's Jake. Please check us out at jd-cars.com. Follow us on Instagram at jd.cars and be sure to subscribe for more content. So today we have yet another exciting upgrade for the BMW F30 over here. As you guys know, I installed this very aggressive M3 style body kit along with the Cybon VS style hood, but I'm still rocking this stock sport wheel here. So. It's time to beef up the steering wheel. As you guys saw in a previous vlog episode, probably last week, I picked up an M Sport steering wheel off of Facebook Marketplace. Big shout out to Matthew. So today we'll be installing it and I couldn't be more excited. So we're gonna pull my dad's beautiful 550 out of the garage here, bring the F30 on in and we'll get working. Okay, so before we even focus on installing the new wheel, of course we have to remove the old steering wheel. Before touching anything up front in the steering wheel and jamming a screwdriver up in there, um, attempting to release those clips, do come over to the trunk, take a precautionary step. It takes literally one minute. Open up your battery compartment here and use a 10 millimeter to remove your positive battery lead and then isolate it using a microfiber or some other sort of rag just so that it can't make contact. And as Brian always tells us at Keys Motorsports, definitely loop something through your trunk latch so that it can't close because we do have an electronically actuated trunk. Most people complain about this step. They say that this is the most tedious and annoying part of removing the wheel just removing the airbag here because at least on BMW wheels, there's two little slits on the back of the steering wheel. It's not even an actual hole. It's just this little slit right here. Same thing on the other side. And basically what we have to do, as you probably know from other videos, we have to insert a little flathead or pick tool and pull back a little retaining spring in order to pull this out. However, the difficult part is once you release one side, you have to hold it out so that the side you've already released doesn't reinsert and re-secure itself. Almost every YouTuber I've seen um, has just edited over this part and said, you know, good luck, it's gonna take a while. I thought it'd be fun to time myself and uh, see exactly how long it takes. I'll probably shoot a little time lapse here and uh, I'll let you know how frustrating it is. Wow, that really does suck, but 826. Now, that's 826 on my second method. As you can see here, I did disassemble the steering column uh, casing a little bit here, and I used a different method, I used an alternate method, opposed to what I explained to you exactly. I knew that I was pulling off those clips, but it just simply would not come off. It was being very stubborn. I don't think this airbag has ever been removed. So I'll explain to you guys what I did here. So basically what I did here was I popped off our steering wheel column housing here. Here's the lower portion. We had two connections, one for the comfort access and one for our heated steering wheel. That's optional, so you may or may not have it. And then I used a combination of two screwdrivers here to release our tabs. Let's unplug the steering wheel just to make things a little easier here. Unplug the airbag, I should say. We can set it this side. All right, we can now see exactly what I'm talking about. So you're gonna slide your screwdriver up, straight up into the steering wheel. You're gonna hit this little block here and your metal spring is gonna be looped around that block. So you're basically gonna go like this and pop it off. Now, that's what everyone instructed me to do. That's what I did um, for probably the first 15, 20 minutes and I got really frustrated because I could feel myself pulling this clip and releasing it, but I just simply could not get this to pop off. And when I did feel this coming off, I'd feel it clip back into place and I was getting pretty frustrated. So, what I did was I popped off the housing and all you have to do is use a little flathead or a plastic trim tool and separate that. There's no fasteners, it's all clips. So just be very careful, pop it apart. 
And initially, when you have the steering wheel in the straight orientation, as you can see, you will not be able to access those clips from behind. However, if you turn the steering wheel to the side here, you can then see on the bottom and on the top, there's a gap. I'm gonna hop out here, try to show you the best I can. There we are. That little hole, that little crevice right there, is exactly where your clip is gonna be. You can just grab yourself a flathead screwdriver, grab that clip and pull it back and release it. So what I actually did was, I had the wheel turned to the right with this little hole on the bottom and then I inserted my screwdriver as you're supposed to. However, I was able to watch myself through that hole, this one actually, on the bottom. I was able to watch myself pull and release this and then I kind of like locked it in place and I rotated the wheel up into this orientation here. And then using my spare flathead came in here and released this clip so that I could release both clips at the same time and pull the airbag straight out. That made things a lot easier. And as I showed you on the timer, it only took me eight and a half minutes. So I think that's definitely the optimal way to remove your steering wheel here. Definitely give it a shot. Now I'm gonna take a 16 mil socket, a little extension, and our ratchet here, we're gonna lock the steering wheel in place all the way down here, hold it with our two knees, and then break this loose. Oh, there we go, remove this bolt. There she is, little 16 millimeter locking flange bolt, pull that out, and we should be able to pull the steering wheel right off. Yep. I did forget to mention that you should disconnect these wires prior to pulling off your steering wheel, just to prevent any damage, but yeah, came off really easily. Let's get the new wheel installed. All right, well, it's pretty weird sitting here with uh, with no steering wheel on. Feels like a Tesla, but um, anyways, time to pop this sucker on. You'll notice it does not have paddle shifters. I, I got this wheel for a bargain. Matthew hooked me up with a really good price on it. I mean, I'd say it's a fair price, given that it doesn't have paddles. The more I've looked into it, it's gonna cost like at least another hundred dollars to convert it to a paddle wheel. Actually more like 150 harness, paddles, and the back cowling. So it'll be a project. We're still gonna install it today. I can still ship perfectly fine with my shifter, but we'll be pulling it off for some future projects and upgrades on this wheel. But we're not gonna worry about that for now. You guys will notice that this wheel can only go on one way. You cannot install it misaligned. So just line up the little tick mark at the bottom and the little mark on the steering column here. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So right down at the bottom, you'll see that little tick mark. Um, but you will notice that there's a flat keyed part of the wheel. So it can't be misinstalled. It can't be installed um, sideways. So you really don't have to worry about that. But oh my gosh, guys. Already, I'm just getting so excited. This thing's so beefy. So, time to reinstall our steering wheel bolt. Just hand thread it all the way in. Once again, you'll wanna hold the wheel with your knees just to keep it from rotating. A lot of people just torque this down with a ratchet or <laughs> even worse, they just crank it down with an impact and that's really not what you wanna do. You're gonna over torque it. Grab yourself a torque wrench. If you haven't picked one up already, invest in one. It's a really smart investment. I have two, this is my smaller one for stuff like this and spark plugs. But anyways, set this to 62 Newton meters or approximately 46 foot pounds and torque this sucker down. Okay, it's torqued down. We can plug back in our connections. Make sure they click into place properly. If you can't reach all the way in there, you can press it in with a little flathead. Make sure it clicks in all the way. Now we install our new airbag. Clearly, this is a completely different airbag from the one we just pulled out. It's also much more compact. Here's the old one, here's the new one. Pretty big size difference here. There's also a big price difference. It's much more common to purchase these wheels without an airbag. Most people sell them without an airbag, and it's usually cheaper that way. Um, I had to purchase mine separately, as I mentioned. I got this from Lithuania, which is kind of funny to think about. Um, most sellers are gonna take like two to three weeks minimum, probably three or four, and that's if your airbag doesn't get held up in customs. So I was able to find a seller, I think I paid 350 and maybe like $18 for expedited shipping. 
they somehow shipped this from Lithuania in three days for like $20. So super impressed, very happy. Um, basically brand new, everything looks great. It's a dual stage as we want here in the United States. I'll have a link down below if that seller, any more of these airbags, they do go pretty quickly. So as before, we got to plug in our airbag. Of course, our battery is still disconnected. We don't want this going off in our face. Okay, clip that in. Make sure it clicks into place. Pop this sucker in just like so. There we go. Give it a pull. As you saw there, mine came out, but it's in there now. And we're all set to go. All right, that beautiful new wheel is installed. I'm gonna reconnect the battery, get this thing pulled outside and get some shots of it. What's up guys, I'm currently at school finishing up editing the M Sport steering wheel video right now, as you can see here. Um, still have my Christmas tree taped up to my bed. Of course, got my M flag above my bed. I just wanted to add in a little update here. Uh, it's currently Thursday, getting this edited and banged out to upload tomorrow on Friday, per usual. And as I said, it's currently Thursday. Uh, Thursday afternoon and I always just seem to have very minimal time to edit these videos at school. I have a ton of schoolwork. I'm running a business with some friends here as part of one of my entrepreneurship classes. So <laughs> pardon all this mess, but uh, I just want to add in a quick note for those of you who are still watching. My analytics show that a lot of you guys drop at like five minutes in, but I realized the video is 11 minutes long already at this point. I filmed a little POV section of my first reactions um, with the new M Sport wheel and I decided I should make a separate video for that because I'm sure some of the people interested in watching this video are just interested for the tutorial aspect. I'm sure there are other people who aren't interested in seeing a tutorial, but they would be interested in the POV. So I'm just going to split it up into two parts. Um, the POV probably isn't going to be a very long video, maybe two or three minutes, but it'll still be a fun video nonetheless. And I'll cut back to the uh, original outro. All right, guys, I'm really happy with the outcome of upgrading the steering wheel here on the F30. Super stoked. The M Sport wheel is a must have upgrade if you really like beefy steering wheel. Camera battery died. Um, as I was saying, must have upgrade if you guys really like a beefy steering wheel like I do. And I'm probably gonna make it even thicker. I'm gonna do one of my classic steering wheel wraps as you guys saw me do on my BMW E90. Let me know down in the comments if you think I should do an Alcantara wrap, a suede wrap, synthetic leather, perforated leather. What do you think I should do? What colors do you think I should do? I'm thinking I should probably do the red stitching. Um, on my last car, I did the M Sport colors, which I did like, and it looks pretty cool, but I also like how the red stitching matches with all the other red accents on the interior of the car, the Sportline accents. So I'll probably go that route, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go smash that like button, subscribe for more BMW content. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time on JD Cars.